So hello everyone and welcome. My name is Kelly Jessup and I'm the Assistant Director for Digital Learning here at Yale School of Management Executive Education. And hope that you're doing well and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. This is the webinar for the Introduction to Wealth Management Theory and Practice Program, also known as Yale's CPWA Online Program. This is one of our two online financial certification programs. It's modeled after our successful SEMA online program, which is investment management theory and practice. Our program director, Jim Dobbs, was instrumental in creating both programs, so he knows them inside and out. Please engage with us during this webinar and don't hesitate to ask questions. Jim is very knowledgeable and this is your opportunity to pick his brain. We may hold questions, but we will do our best to answer all of them. To ask questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can submit your question to everyone or just to me, but I suggest you send it to everyone as there may be similar questions. So please use the Q&A function for questions for Jim. And if you have any technical issues, you can go ahead and use the chat and I'll do my best to help with that. So now I'd like to introduce our program director. Jim Dobbs is CPWA certified. He's also CFP and SEMA certified. He was a financial advisor for 25 years and ran his own RIA practice before retiring from it to work full-time in his financial education company. Jim has worked with different certifying bodies and universities for the last 20 years, helping to build and manage financial certification programs. More importantly though, Jim has had extensive experience with the Investments and Wealth Institute. He personally helped create the CPWA certification and has served IWI in many roles, including as chair of IWI's technical advisory board. Jim has directed and taught in the classroom version of this CPWA course for many years and has now partnered with us to bring his expertise and enthusiasm to Yale and in turn to you. You'll see he's a passionate guy. He's committed to success and he measures his success based on yours. Please welcome Jim Dobbs. Well, thank you, Kelly. Can you hear and see me okay? Sure can. Wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. Um, and thanks for that kind introduction, Kelly. Um, and Kelly's right, this is for you guys. So we'll take about an hour, depends on how many questions you guys have. Um, anything and everything's fair game about this certification, uh, about what we're trying to help you with, um, about how this may help you in your practice, about our specific program as, as well. Um, yeah, usually I can say I was in your chair, um, you know, studying for a certification like this and like for SEMA, C CFP and a handful of others. This one's a little different because, yeah, I was on the original committee and they did bring me in to, to create this certification about 15 years ago, I guess. Um, so it's a little different. Now, that being said, it's it's kind of interesting. We'll start with a a, a bad rabbit trail here, um, but I'll keep it short. Um because this is accredited certification, there are rules, um, which is great. If, if it weren't, I don't think we would be offering this at Yale. They, IWI takes certifications very seriously. So like to earn the certification, you have to be off the exam committee for like three or four years before you can take it. So even though I was kind of the chief architect in the early days, I had to wait three or four years after I got off the exam committee just to even take the test. So Anyway, I was kind of in your chair, but not really. But that being said, I've helped a lot of people get through this over the years. And so I generally know where you might get tripped up or where the test may get tricky, those kinds of things. So we've baked all of that in to the program. But this is a time for you just to learn about the program and ask any questions you have. Again, they're all fair game. Now, for sake of clarification, let me just point out, if you didn't know, Investments and Wealth Institute, IWI, they are the certifying body, right? So they they own an administrative CPWA and the uh, SEMA and RMA, and then they do all this other cool stuff uh, too. All this other cool stuff is actually how I found them about 20 years ago out of the CFP at the time. And I've just kind of gotten tired of the, the, the regular normal conferences. And they were putting out great, I think I'm called Infobox, and they were putting out great uh, publications, educational and practitioner publications, and journals, as they're called, and they had great conferences. I think they still do compared to the others. And that's kind of how I landed on the many, many years ago. But if you're not familiar with them, go to the website, here it is, um, and check them out. A lot of great things that you can plug yourself into, even a certification is not right for you, but maybe more importantly, once you earn your certification, 
there's a network um, to, to plug into and I think that can be very helpful in your process. Excuse me, Jim, I'm going to jump in just for a second. Um, we're having uh, problems with your audio. It seems like it's going in and out. Okay. Um, testing, Do you want to maybe... Testing, yeah. testing, one, two. Still still the same? Yeah, it's a, it's a little fuzzy. Do you, you maybe want to try and disconnect and reconnect or is there something yeah, to adjust? Yeah, a couple things here. Okay. Yeah, thank you um, for, for putting that in the in the in the box there i was i wasn't sure if it was just me okay testing testing one two testing testing still same mm -hmm. issue that seems better okay okay testing that... testing one two okay i'm getting i'm getting yeses it sounds better okay okay so... yeah everyone if if um if this happens again like please definitely uh, let us know and we'll we'll jump in and resolve it yeah absolutely so can you hear me okay yeah, it, it's a little it's a little um, broken up more than it normally is, but it's better. Okay, maybe if I hold my mic up, we've never had this issue out of all these yeah. years, but is that any better? Probably not. It, it seems a little better. Okay, well we'll, yeah. we'll go with this. We're getting we're getting thumbs up, so uh, we got a let's thumbs go up. Let's take that. <laughs> all okay. right, so I just rambled on about the organization, and if you're not familiar with it, just go ahead and log into their website, check it out. A lot of great resources for you. Hey, here's one kind of idea or suggestion. Some of you may be still trying to convince your boss or superior to let you take it and or to reimburse you for it. They've actually got some cool website uh, or, or web information and links in their website to help you with that. I think they still even have a draft letter that you can put in front of your boss. Um, it, you know, if you didn't already have something uh, that you, you thought you could put in front of them. So anyway, a lot of great resources there on IWI's website. I would recommend you go there and spend some time if you have not already. All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, although I would imagine many of you do, they are still offering scholarships. They started this a couple of years ago at Yale. We don't have any discounts or scholarships right now for this program, um, but IWI does. And as you can see here, Wow, they're like from a thousand to five thousand dollars. That's a lot on a program that otherwise costs about seventy three hundred. And what we can talk about in, in a little bit on the pricing and some of the details. So, look, if you think any of these things on the left hand side under who is eligible might apply to you, I think it's worth ten or fifteen minutes. It's not a very complicated um, scholarship application. That being said, the caveat is unlike when you get ready and apply for candidacy, that usually only takes about a week, give or take, for them and then about a week for us to process you and get you through Yale Central and get you set up. But their scholarships review process takes longer. It could easily take you a couple of weeks to get your response back. So just setting your expectations there. But if you think you can get one, I would absolutely give it a shot because that could save you some serious money. All right, in case you didn't know, but I would suspect most of you do. Let me just say a couple of words about some of the these more elite, uh, more known certifications and the differences. This is Certified Private Wealth Advisor. It's kind of like CFP Now What? Uh, most of us, I think almost all of us on the original committee who created CPWA, we were, probably still are, um, CFP designees. And it wasn't like, well, CFP needs to be replaced or we need to come up with something better. No, it was like, we're all CFPs here, um, but you know, our, our client bases have grown. We're serving a different kind of client, a wealthier client, a client with more complex needs. Think about your clients selling 20, 30, $50 million small businesses. Um, we just didn't get a lot of training, most of us, in our CFP programs for that, and they really weren't designed for, for that. CFP is a great certification. I think it's a great curriculum, but it just wasn't designed for that nitty-gritty, in the detail, in the weeds, tax, technical, even legal to some degree work uh, that we all need to, to know when we're working with high net worth clients. So CPWA is meant to be a, a more narrow curriculum but it just takes a much deeper dive in those core areas uh, that are gonna be specific to your high net worth. And when I say high net worth, let's just say for ballpark figures, on the low end, it's five to 10 million and into the deck of millions. Uh, this is not specifically an ultra high net worth, although most of the content will apply to your 
60 to $600 million clients as well. Now, SEMA, uh, like CFA, is, well, uh, got to put a little footnote there, is, is all investment. SEMA really is all investments. So if you want to take a deeper dive versus what you did in CFP land back in the day, SEMA may be right for you, but it's just all investments. It's a real deep dive there. For investment advisors, though, not institutional portfolio managers, not investment securities analysts like you would have with a CFA. If you do want to be a portfolio manager at the institutional level or securities analyst, I highly recommend CFA. Doesn't mean these others can't help, but you're going to end up going for CFA anyway. And that one takes you three to four years, as you can see. It's really closer to four. They have those three challenging exams with pass rates of 30 to 50%. And most candidates take um, uh, three to four years because they fail at least one of those at least once. Um, and only about six or 7% of people who start CFA finish. But if that's your goal, I think CFA is right for you. So there's actually quite a bit of difference in all four of these. Um, I very rarely talk to somebody who, after talking with them for five or 10 minutes, it's like, well, I'm not really sure which one you should go for. You're kind of on the fence. That almost never happens. So my offer to you is reach out to me. You'll get my contact information here in a little bit. If you're like, yeah, but I'm still not sure. Two of these look really interest, uh, interesting to me. Uh, just reach out to me. We can schedule a quick call, kind of talk it through. All right. The certification process for CPW is actually quite simple. Um, the content is challenging. It's going to take you some time, but the process is pretty easy. Again, first, apply for the scholarship. So do that first. It's kind of even like 1A here. If 1B is submit your certification program application. So apply for the scholarship, get your answer yes or no, uh, if you think you can get one. And then really formally step one is just submit your certification for, for application. And that's for candidacy. They're going to run a background check and check for the completeness of your, your, um, your application. Again, that takes about a week. Sometimes it's just a few days. Once they approve you, they're going to send us your name and say, hey, Jim has been approved as a CPW candidate. He has chosen Yale right here on his application. And now you guys take him. And so it takes us about a week also. Sometimes it's a few days, but better think of it as a week to get you all set up in the Yale system and into uh, the Canvas platform that we use for CPWA. So next step is just get through the education program. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit of detail in a minute. And then pass the certification exam. So you'll see that our program is broken up into kind of part A, part B. Part A is get through the educational program. It's required by IWI, meets all their requirements for an education program at this level. And then you're actually going to spend most of your time with us in part B of our program, which is test prep. In fact, I dare say you're going to spend the vast majority of your time working through the test prep material to get ready for a pretty challenging certification exam. Once you pass the certification exam, and you'll see statistics in a minute, you can look on IWI's website as well. Most of our candidates do pass, uh, the vast majority pass on their first attempt. Once you pass that exam, then a few days to a week later, they'll send you licensing paperwork. You'll jump through a couple more hoops and you'll be certified. So there you go. It's one, two, three, four. Again, the caveat is if you apply for the scholarship before actual step one. All right, a couple more slides and we'll see if we've got any early questions. Uh, Kelly has the voice. Is the sound coming through okay? Yeah, it seems like it's settled down. Okay. Um, all right, so topics list. Uh, here's just kind of a general idea. There's a longer version of this. I highly encourage you to get if you haven't already. You can just email me if that's simpler. You can get it off of our website the longer version of this. It's like five pages, color-coded. It's got line-by-line -line items in all of these topic areas and the exam weightings. I think you need that. I think you want that even before you decide to apply for candidacy. And here's why. If, if I'm you or me back in the day and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's my next education? How do I need to sharpen my skills and tools? What certification may I go for? I wanna be asking myself the following questions as I walk through their curriculum or core body of knowledge, whatever they want to call it, their core curriculum document, I want to be asking myself, 
as I go through those items is learning this, is learning this, is learning this. Is this going to help me in practice now? Is this going to help me better serve my clients? And then just think of my client names and their situations. Is this going to help me be more confident? Is this going to help me sell and bring in bigger and better clients? Is this going to help me now, not just down the road? Um, and I think if you can get through a five-page document and many, many dozens of line items, and you're like, yeah, absolutely, the, the overwhelming majority of this is going to help me in my practice, then I think you're, you know, you're in the right place in terms of content. Um, but if you're like, well, I think maybe half of it would be helpful, then I would take a step back because there's a lot of things you can do with your time. Opportunity cost is really high for you all probably at this point in your career. So I think you want to walk through that five-page document and just make sure. I think between your intellect asking and answering those questions and your gut feel reaction, I think you'll be able to firm up whether this is a, a good um, opportunity for you and if it's going to be time well spent. So just send me an email uh, and I'll send you that uh, five-page document so you can start looking through those core items. All right. Um, as I mentioned before, IWI's got some nice information. Some of it is their own, so obviously it's promotional, but some of it's third party. I take groups, really a couple others that have done, in, uh, done surveys, research on the benefits um, and the image of financial designations and certifications. And so IWI has been able to leverage some of that. And then actually they just post some of it on their website as well. I think that can be helpful in, in determining, okay, is this right for me? Are the benefits going to outweigh the opportunity cost and the time I spend? Certainly you're going to be able to differentiate yourself from others with really a deep understanding of the complexities of the challenges and solutions for your high net worth clients. Okay, that's kind of a no-brainer, I think. Higher compensation is not just talk by IWI. There's enough good information out there, in my opinion, by third parties to say, yeah, well, CPWAs make more than CFPs, and CFPs make more than those who don't hold a CFP, et cetera, et cetera. So there's some good information. If you're into that kind of stuff, you can get that off of their website, IWI's website as well. More confidence with clients, expert instruction. I'll, I'll show you the kind of faculty list here in a minute. Uh, relevant content. But let me circle back to confidence for just a minute. I think it's not just confidence with clients, especially your really sophisticated clients. Think 10, 20, 50 million dollars, especially if you're not working in that space all the time. But it's also with prospective clients as well. And it's also with the advisor's that with a $20, $30 million client, you're going to have to work with no matter what. Now, some of those tax specialists or state planning attorneys may be in-house for you at your firm or your company or your brokerage or your bank. But in many cases, they're not. They're going to be outside and you're going to have to work with them. If, if only just the annual meeting, sometimes even more, more often than that, especially if they're about to sell a $20 million business and their net worth is only $30 million. So, that's one of the most exciting things that I see over the years when I talk to you guys after the fact, when I run into you at conferences or out there in the field, it's you're confident with the CPAs and attorneys goes up. And hopefully the more time you put in this program, it should help. You're going to be able to not just know the jargon, but when you come out of those meetings, I think you can actually have a debriefing with your clients like I did so many years. And I think that was a huge value where the, easily half my clients were like, Jim, can we do the debrief thing again? Because, you know, they just started talking over my head and using all these terms and words. And I just don't even know what was going on about halfway through the, the, the meeting. So can we talk? And so really want to get you up to speed so you feel really comfortable and confident in having that kind of conversation with your client. All right, program goals and objectives. And then we'll see if we've got early questions. I think this is really important, not just checking the curriculum, uh, the content list to make sure that it's right for you at this moment in your career, but making sure you understand what the program is, program providers trying to help you with. It just helps set the right uh, expectation. As you can imagine, our first goal, and we have many more than this, but these are kind of the three biggies, is to, to deliver comprehensive coverage of all those topics. Now, there are 550 topics in that five page report that, that I told you about earlier. So we want you to have all that uh, coverage and 
what we think in a practical and appropriate way. Now, we're not going to cover all of those topics in the course level and then in test prep. No, sometimes it's more complicated, but helpful in practice. So we're going to focus more on that in the, in the uh, course area that I'll show you in a minute. And sometimes, oh, well, maybe it's not used as much in practice, but that's really tricky on the test for whatever reason. There are two or three questions you might see that are real tricky. So we're really going to have to cover, spend more time um, going over that. So it's this, this idea of comprehensive coverage that I don't think anybody has other than us here at Yale. We do want to help you to grow in knowledge, tools, skills, resources for your job. And I've already kind of alluded to that earlier. That's the one I get most excited about. It's, it's great to be associated with Yale. I think you'll find, as I do, it's a, it's a great thing. Um, it's great to have more letters after your name, especially an accredited financial certification like CPWA. Great. But, you know, is it really helping you in your practice day in, day out, week in, week out? That's, that's what we really want to focus on. That's harder to, to measure. So maybe that's not a smart goal, as they call it. Um, but it's still very important. Uh, Richard Joyner, who really came up with the idea of CPWA about 20, 25 years ago, this was really what was most important to him. And I think it's important we all carry that legacy on. And then finally, as I can attest to, and as you guys know too, because you probably hold other designations, as you get closer and closer to the end and your exam, it's going to be more and more about the exam for you. You're just going to get micro-focused on that. So yeah, we certainly want to help you develop the skills and knowledge that you need to not only pass this test, but pass it on your first attempt. So those are three, really the three biggies for us. Uh, but Kelly, let's stop here and just see if we've got any questions. All right, so we do have a question. Uh, this is about the experience requirement. Do you need the five years of experience before applying or just by the time you pass the exam? Yeah, good, good question. So on the five years experience, you now can start the process before you have the five years experience. Back in the old days, that was not the case, but you can. Doesn't mean you should. I'll come back to that in a minute. But if you're three or four years in and you've looked through the content outline and you've got some other knowledge and skills from other programs, other training, other education, then yeah, you can start. And you, you would work your way through our program, pass your test. And then if, if the only thing you had left was to get your five years, you just have to sit on it, so to speak. And then once you hit your five-year threshold um, for experience, you would be able to start using the mark. So great, great question there. What I wanted to come back to was, but look, this is really should be considered an intermediate to advanced certification curriculum and testing. So if you're a year or two in, you weren't a financial planner or advisor or wealth manager before you're doing what you do now, You've never done anything other than your Series 7 exam and some other securities exams. This is probably not the place to start. There are probably better, more foundational places for you to start versus just jumping into the deep end like you would be here. So again, another offer, if you want to reach out to me, if you're in that boat and you're like, well, I don't know, um, I think I could do it. But from what you're saying, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should start with something else. Reach out to me. Um, Jim at Dobbs Education or Jim.Dobbs at Yale.edu, uh, and we'll schedule a quick time to, to talk it out uh, by the phone. I, I really want to make sure that if this is right for you, you come and you come with us, hopefully. But if it's not, if it's for down the road for you, that you make that, that decision, if it's the best decision for you now as well. And then we'll just see you down the road when you come see us in a year or two or three. Okay. Um, does the CMA experience help with the CPWA program? Yeah, I think it does, but asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Um, it depends on what your experience was in. If your experience was as a banker, if your experience was a tax auditor, uh, if your experience is as an estate planning uh, attorney, those help you in specific areas, but not in all the content. So I think it depends on what you've been doing. If you've been a financial planner or advisor working with high net worths and working in a kind of a comprehensive type of way, not just doing their investments or insurance, then yeah, it should help a lot. But not everybody's in that space. I would argue most people are not in that space. So again, I think it does depend on that specific experience to answer that question, but good question. Okay. 
I think we can move on. All right. Um, so as you can imagine, with an online program, we're just trying to make this as flexible as possible, but we want to give you guardrails and we want to give you guidance and best practices. Again, having done this for many years and now thousands of, of candidates, um, including when I worked with Chicago as their program director for the first 10 years when there was no online program before I left to create this online program. Um, so no need to travel. Everything's online. Everything can be downloaded. You can copy, save, print anything. The caveat is you cannot share it with anybody. You and or your company paid for this for you. So it's just for you. Don't put it out there in any of those study, <laughs> those study um, websites. Uh, don't share it with a colleague. Don't share it with somebody who chose a different program. It's just for you. But the point is, because you can have all this on your hard drive, you really don't have to be online. You could download the MP4 videos, create MP3s if you just want to listen. You can do it on the train or in the plane or in your car or whatever. Um, the only thing you really have to be online for is to pass some tests at the course level. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. But the idea here is let you do this on your own time. It's asynchronous. You start whenever you want. You move through at your own pace. Nobody's putting pressure on you. And then we give you some blueprints on how to work through the material in a timely way. And you just kind of pick and choose what strategy you want to uh, work with. And then if that's not working and you want to speed up, you just do that. Or, or you want to slow down, you can do that too. So convenience and study whenever, wherever is really important. All right, a big one, study time expectations. Now, one to 200 hours is very normal. And easily, I would say the majority, well, if a majority is 51%. Um, so the majority of our state is probably well over that, but 100 to 200 hours total time from like the day they log in online the first time to the Yale program to the time they take and pass the test, the certification exam, that is 100 to 200 hours, very normal. That being said, we do have some noticeable tails. I'm not gonna say they're super fat tails statistically, but they're noticeable to me anyway. Um, we, as you'll hear in a minute, the vast majority of CPWA candidates come to Yale for a number of reasons. Um, and because there's so many people coming in, easily every single month, we have somebody come into the program and they finish everything within a month. So they come in in June and sometime in July, they're done. They're certified. That happens. Now, that probably took them less than 100 hours. Uh, now, that's an accelerated <laughs> pace. And that's anywhere from an impressive to exceptional candidate, but that happens and it happens regularly, although it's not the norm. On the flip side of that, we might have somebody come in with only a year or two in experience and their experience isn't that great. I mean, in terms of comprehensive coverage of these topics, or maybe they're a slower learner. Maybe they have learning disabilities or learning challenges. Maybe they're just not a good test taker. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe all these things and it could be over 500 hours for that person. So that tail is there in our population-based curve, if you will, and it's noticeable, it's just not big. So anyway, 100 to 200 hours is probably what you're thinking when you are budgeting your time right now, thinking, okay, do I wanna do this? Do I have time to do this? All of that stuff. I would say this, when you look at your calendar, cause you're gonna get a year without having to pay more money to get through this, um, I think you look at your calendar and you go, hey, look, is the next six months any better or any worse than any other time for me? I was a practitioner for 27 years and a lot of administrative, even sales and marketing things, you know, I could predict what my workload was going to be. It was the clients, obviously, that I didn't know when the, the Johnsons or the Walkers or somebody was going to call in with a big issue, good or bad. Um, but when you look over your, ne your next six months and you go, well, that doesn't look any worse than any other time for me, typically in a year. Well, then that's probably the time to start. But if you look at the next six months, like if you're a tax, if you do tax compilation or tax planning and you're in January, yeah, now is not the time to start CPWA because you're heavy, heavy in the tax season and you really want to be able to dedicate time and not lose time um, once you get into the program. So I think timing does matter a little bit here. And so take that into to, uh, effect. I'm playing with my microphone, Kelly. Hopefully my sound is okay. Am I 
waffling at all? Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up, so we're good. Yeah, you're good. All right, so again, yeah, it depends on your experience, knowledge, study habits. Can you really focus? Thanks for the thumbs up down there, guy or gal. Uh, and test taking skills is as well. The bottom line, though, is we created this, and it's kind of harder for us to administer, not that you, not that it matters to you, but we wanted it to be fully flexible so you could move through fast if you want to, or slow and take your time if you want to do that. And you not you don't have anybody chirping at you and getting on you and stressing you out if you do want to go slower. So you're going to sit for the exam really as quickly as you want to. All right, uh, structure and details. I did mention the $7,300 price tag. That includes IWI candidacy fee, background che uh, checks, testing. They're going to do the background check, of course, when you first apply for candidacy and then before they certify you. And that also includes the Yale costs as well. That's for the Yale course and all the test prep. You won't need anything else. Um, if you choose another program, you may need, well, not may, you're going to need to buy the test prep from IWI for like 600 bucks or something. I didn't want that to be the case here. So I baked everything into the Yale program. You've got everything in one place. You don't need anything else. And 7300, 7295 is your price, unless you get a scholarship um, through IWI. Um, ongoing registration. I think I mentioned that before. So you start whenever you want. There's really no technical ending date because we're asynchronous, not synchronous. However, your program fee, your original 7295 covers a year of access to our material. Now, since it only takes 100 to 150 to 200 hours for most people to get through the whole process, it shouldn't take anybody a whole year. Um, so we wanted to give you far beyond what you should need in terms of access and 365 days or a year does that. Now, that being said, you can buy access for another year for, I believe right now the price is a little over 2000. I think it's $2,250. Um, but nobody should even need to ever do that because remember I said you could download everything, pass your course, which is the only thing that you have to be online for, download all the test prep and just study off your hard drive till you're ready to test. So you, nobody should really even need to do that. Now, we do have people do that when their practice got busy and time just got away from them, and maybe their employer is paying for the extension, right? So it's there for you if you want it and need it, but it really shouldn't come into play, especially if money is tight. All right, uh, there's more information on the exam itself. I'm going to do a couple more slides in a second about the exam. But the pass rate's strong for Yale candidates. It's between 80 and 90%. We'll be in the, between 90 and 95 in a strong quarter, which is how they report back to, to us. And again, you can see more details on IWI's website. I got a feeling that will go down over time. Well, a couple of things. One, by far the majority of new candidates are coming to Yale. And, and it's been estimated that's 80% or higher. And that was told to me by a high-end uh, IWI manager just weeks ago. Um, so clearly we're driving the pass rate um, given the, the number of candidates as a percentage that come to us. But the reason I say that, I think over time this is going to go down is I've been involved with these financial certifications for decades now. And as they get more established and they get more elite, the pass rates do for a number of reasons. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, but they go down. So I, I think we'll see this come down. I, I'm hoping we can hold our Yale candidate pass rate at least over 80%, at least in the 70s over the next couple of years. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how that all shakes out. All right, let me talk a little bit about the program part one and two or part A and B, if you want to call them that, as I mentioned this or intro this before. So you'll start with the course. <clears throat> You're going to spend about 40 hours in our course. So like if you were live in person with us in New Haven, you'd sit in the seats and we would teach <laughs> and do our thing. And it would take you about a week to get through that. In this situation, everything's uh, it, by video, right? They're, they're, they're video lectures or sessions. Everything's on demand. We've got a course map for you. So you're just following along, hopefully. I mean, you can move around. I don't generally recommend that. You just do it sequentially. Um, and then after each of the 11 core topic sections, you're going to take a test. 
Um, it's an online test. It's not proctored. It's not the certification exam. It's just to show that you're following along and you're grasping the core concepts. And that Yale and I can accept that, okay, Jim has done what he needed to do to pass this course. It's not for academic credit. It's not part of a degree. Of course, this is executive education, but we still need to have some assessment before we give you the certificate from, from Yale. So spend about 40 hours there. You're watching the videos. You're taking the tests. There's, you'll already have access to the full readings library. That's about 24, 2,500 pages long. You're going to probably use that more in test prep. I'll talk about that in a second. But it's just basically watching the videos and doing the test. Now, the cool thing I like about the videos is when Michael Kitsis or Toby Moskowitz says something brilliant, and they do often, and it's deep, and you're like, oh, wait, 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 I was daydreaming there <laughs> or distracted or... I was following along, but that was really tough. I need to watch that again. Well, live and in person, you, not for very long. You can't really raise your hand and say, Michael Kitsis, would you just back up and do that whole thing again? He might entertain you one time to do that, but you know he can't do that for the whole class. So with the video, you can just move your cursor back and watch it again. So that's what I really like about the videos. Um, or if I get to an area in one of these, er uh, what, a lecture in one of these areas where it's like, man, I, I already feel like I'm kind of an expert in that that uh, way. I do this all the time. Well, maybe I just speed up my video 1.25 or even 1.5. So really got a lot of control there in terms of how fast or slow, how diligent you want to be in getting through those. But regardless, once you pass the tests, the 11 tests, they're, they're all about a dozen to 30 questions each. You can take them again and again if you need to. And again, they're not proctored. They're just in the platform. Once you do that, we'll send you the Yale certificate. You've, you know, you haven't taken your certification exam yet, but you've passed the Yale course. You can get your Yale certificate. We're going to send IWI same or next day information. Hey, Jim did pass the Yale course. He's eligible to schedule his certification exam. Now, it usually takes them a few days to a week to get back to you then and say, Jim, congratulations. Yale let us know that you've completed the course. Here's Here's, here are the instructions for scheduling your exam when you're ready. So that's kind of how that works out logistically. And then lastly, but maybe most importantly to you, for those of you chomping at the bit, that's when your test prep material is going to open for you. You're going to see it, kind of we're teasing you. You're going to see it, but it's going to be shaded and you can't open it until you get through the course. Look at the course level. I just want you to, to get that foundation really, really solid. Because once you get into test prep, man, it is in the weeds. It is in the details. And a lot of it is just how to take a test and how to take this test, yada, yada, yada. So I really want you to focus on the course and not even really think about the test for your first 40 hours. Then the rest of your 100 to 200 hours, minus your 40 that you've already done, then you're just getting into the weeds of the test prep. And what does that look like? Well, it's... The same content overlapped. Again, I, we don't cover everything in the course or and the test prep. There's overlap for those reasons I mentioned to you before. That being said, the resources, the learning tools are all different. So now we're going to go to a shorter abbreviated kind of form of learning where we got videos from me, several hours of me going through those 500 topics with right now it's just under a thousand test prep slides saying, hey, See these next three slides? For whatever reason, the last year, they've really been testing this hard. So you're probably going to get a question out of this grouping here. So go through these examples or practice questions, the concepts, the applications. See these next two slides? For whatever reason, even though it's right here in their detailed content outline, they're hardly ever testing on this. So go through it, but don't spend a lot of time. There's lower hanging fruit out there. That kind of thing. So it's just going through the 11 sections and all those topics in, in that way. So you're creating an outline of high, mid, and low probability to, to see on your exam. You should also be marking, as you'll see in our instructions, I feel great about this. I don't feel very good about this. I am horrible at this. I know nothing about this. So then you can go back into the lectures and or the reading library and fill in the holes, fill in those knowledge uh, gaps. And then hundreds and hundreds of practice questions. Yeah, there's around a thousand of those, including a mock exam. Actually, we have three mock exams, but Hardly any of our candidates were doing mock exam two and three, and that's no good because if I've got a question in there, I want you to study it and know it. 
Um, so I rolled those two mock exams, those, those last two mock exams questions into the practice sets. Um, so the, the point is two things. One, I think it's the quality of the practice questions over quantity for, for a certification exam like this. That's really important. And number two, but this is really important. Unlike our securities exams were really, for the most part, we just studied practice sets, right? Um, there were a couple of exams that were a little harder for me, options and derivatives, those kind of things. But the rest of them, not so hard. Just study your practice questions. You're going to have to study more than practice questions to understand this material at a level deep enough to pass this test. So you're going to use all of these thousand practice questions, but you're also going to need to really spend a lot of time in those summary slides, those test prep slides, and go back into the video lectures and reading library when you need to fill in those deeper dive knowledge gaps. So that's the formula that works. There's really no getting away around that. I would say 90 to 95 percent of you need to follow the plan. And if you do, you'll be successful or you should be. OK, uh, a little bit on the test. And actually, let's just stop here and see if we've got questions as you stare at this lady acting all nice about an exam. I, I don't know why we have that there. I may should put somebody with a frowny face on it or something. But anyway, I'll let you st stare at those details. Kelly, any questions? We do have a few. So this person posted a question and then was able to answer it themselves. But I'm going to ask it anyway, because we do get this question a fair amount. Um, will any of the education courses count toward CFP CE? So do you want to just talk a little bit about yeah, good question. Yeah. So, um, yes, the cool thing is if you hold a CFP like I do and you go through CPWA, once you pass the Yale course, not the certification exam, but just the Yale course, <clears throat> you're going to get all 28 hours of your two year requirement. Now, you, you know, you got 30 hours because you got the two hours of CE. That won't count because, as you probably remember, your CFP board uh, continuing education credits in ethics have to be on their ethics code. So that's 30 hours, but the whole rest of the 28 hours will be covered by just completing the Yale course. Great question. And then real quickly, because sometimes people ask, but as you stay in this business and get more certifications, you want to look for overlapping CE. Um, I've got other certifications uh, other than the, the ones that you saw up front, but with IWI and CFP board, they play really nicely together. Or at least they have for the last few decades. And it, almost all of that overlaps. So like I have 40 hours for SEMA, another 40 hours for CPWA. This is on two year rolling basis and 30 hours on that two year rolling basis for C CFP. But I'm not, so that'd be 80, that'd be 110 hours or something every two years. I'm not doing that. I'm probably doing 50 hours, give or take and knocking out all three of those certification CEs because they allow for duplication or even in triplicate um, as the case uh, may be. So a good question, though. Okay. Uh, do most companies reimburse once the Yale certificate is received, or do they typically require passing the certification exam before? Yeah, they good question. So there are three camps. Um, easily a third of our candidates aren't reimbursed at all. It's probably closer to 40%. But for those that do, that's also kind of all over the board. Um, it's very common that they'll say, no, we're not giving you a dime until you get certified because we want you to have a, a dog in this hunt or whatever the saying may be. So ask them that. that is com that's probably more common. Every once in a while, though, actually more than every once in a while, it's just not as common that we'll have a company say, well, look, as, as soon as they pass the Yale course, we will, we will go ahead and reimburse them. It's more common. You have to finish the whole thing. But we've seen plenty of cases where it was just past the course. Good question. Is there a designated passing percentage for the exam, or is it similar to the CFP exam passing structure? Yeah, it's the latter. It's similar to CFP. CFA does it too, FRM, and, and most of the higher end certifications, I would argue, use something called modified ANGOF, and I, I could do a 30-minute thing on that, but let's not. Um, so it, it moves around. It depends on the specific questions you get, because every sp specific question they call item has a history in their database. So if you and I or Kelly and I take the test tomorrow, um, then we're probably not going to get exactly the same questions. Um, and we may actually get pretty different questions, even though they've all the questions have a history and it's acceptable history, according to psychometricians. But maybe my questions were a little bit easier than hers. 
Not a lot, but a little bit. Well, then my passing score may be a little higher because I got slightly easier questions on the whole. But that being said, that difference ought to be really small. And maybe most importantly, I'll tell you right now, we think the pass score, not pass rate, passing score is about 77%. And the reason I say that is when you take an, uh, the test, if you pass, it just says, congratulations, Jim, you passed. If you fail, it says, sorry, Jim. Well, I don't know if it says sorry, but you have failed this, <laughs> this test. And then they give you a breakdown on your major um, quadrants in terms of content, how you did. And then you can add up your score and see what you got. And I don't think in the last two or three years, I've seen anybody get a 77 and fail. I've seen a few 76s like, oh, I, I got a 76% of these right and I failed. So I, I'm pegging the past score right now, right around 77%. Good question. Hey, you alluded to some. However, what do you believe are the main differences between Yale's program and Chicago's program other than the online versus on-site? Yeah, yeah. I, and that is the biggest one. I think online is, is, is clearly the biggest one. Synchronous versus asynchronous is another. So if you want maximum flexibility, then you're probably going to lean towards us in that regard. Now, some of you may be like, yeah, but Jim, I really need somebody. I just, I'll be honest, I don't have the discipline. <laughs> and I need somebody to say, you've got to stay on this schedule um, or you've got to come to class and you've got to take all of this in in one week. And, you know, everybody will know if you're not paying attention because you're in a chair and everybody's looking. So if you need that kind of structure, then you might consider Chicago. You will have to pay for the, for the extra test prep because it's not included in, in the price. I think our candidates study more, they study deeper. And I, and I think that's why the pass rate is, is in any given quarter can be significantly higher. So I think ours do more work that pays off on the exam. More importantly to me, I hope it pays off in practice, but you might be like, no, I'd rather have that other structure and I'll take, I'll, I'll roll the dice and take my chances and do that. And that's fine. Um, I don't think you can make a bad choice. It's just trying to make the better choice. Kick the tires with Chicago or any other choice you have, just like you're doing here. And then just kind of let the combination of your brain, your intellectual brain and your feelings, your gut, tell you which you think would be better because the prices are pretty close. So anyway, I don't know if that helped. If it didn't, just uh, you know, ring me through email and we'll, we'll talk by phone. Hey, uh, this is a question about LinkedIn. I know you're active on LinkedIn. Uh, upon completing the program, at the, the Yale education portion of the program, how do people typically market themselves on LinkedIn? Do they list Yale SOM under education as in Yale SOM executive Great education? question. So yeah, you right now, and it has been since we started this seven or eight years ago, you can do that. You can put it in ed education. But it, here's the black and white of it. No matter whether it's in your Vita, your resume, your own personal website, your business website, LinkedIn, whatever, you need to be very specific when you mention your connection to Yale and Yale School of Management. Always mention the course or the program that you took. So as long as you're putting in Yale School of Management, executive education, CPWA certification program or course, that's acceptable. And so you can do that in your LinkedIn as well. It's just, you've always got to tie the two together for obvious reasons, we wouldn't want anybody saying uh, Yale University, and that's implying that that one received a bachelor's or any kind of degree, actually, for that matter, from Yale, if they didn't. I went to Carnegie Mellon, that was my last terminal degree. And, and so when I have Yale around, you want to be able to quickly find my association with Yale, as opposed to, you know, I'm a PhD teaching at Carnegie Mellon. Um, <laughs> or I'm a PhD teaching at Yale, which I'm not. So the point is just be very clear and intentional about your association with Yale. And if you ever have any questions about that, you can just reach out to me and show me what, you're, what you think you want to put out there and I'll give it a quick blessing or not, um, as the case may be. Good question though, I appreciate that. Okay, we are ready to press on, thank you. Okay, so you've had enough time to stare at this lovely lady. Um, who is very excited about this exam. <laughs> so I don't need to go through all of this. I do wanna mention the calculator policy. Uh, using time value of money functions in a calculator on this exam are gonna be important, but probably only for about a handful of questions. 
um, you could work around it for all the other questions. On those five, you'd, well, it could be three, it could be seven, whatever, we'll just call it about five. You'd have to guess if you didn't have a financial calculator. So I think it's important to get one. Uh, there are a number that they approve. It's in their candidate handbook. Again, send me an email, I'll send you their candidate handbook, or you can just pull it off of ours or their website. That being said, here is the list. You can screenshot this or take a picture with your phone or just look at it in the candidate handbook. But I, I really want to draw your attention to the to the link at the bottom there. There's a professor out in Colorado. I forget which university he's at, but he's got a great cool website. It's free. Um, how to work your financial calculator. Um, and I think that's worth it for the handful of questions you're going to get. Now, look, if you're an old pro and gosh, if you're a dinosaur like me and you use the HP 12C, well, good for you. This will be a piece of cake for you. But for most of you, that's probably not the case. So go to his website and there's even a little thing on his homepage that says how to pick my financial calculator. Like, are you studying for CFA or CFP or CPWA? Here's the one I recommend. I've highlighted the two that are most popular. And I think they're the simplest to use for this test. So if you don't have one or you've got one, but you hadn't used it in years, I would recommend one of these two calculators. Do the 12 or 15 practice sets he has in his website with your specific calculator because he goes through the specific keystrokes. We're not going to do that because there's just too many of these in our programs. So we're going to assume you already have kind of a working knowledge of your calculator. So if you're rusty on that, you need a refresher, spend an hour or so on his website. That's probably all you're going to need to get right up to speed to be ready for what we're going to throw at you in this program. All right, well, where's my help? This is really important. I, I want full disclosure here. This is meant to be a self-study program. There is help, but if any of you are like, yeah, but for whatever reason, my preference or my need is I need to be talking to faculty regularly about the content, then this won't be a good fit for you. You would need to, to reach out to any other options you have and ask them, well, is that an option there? Um, you're going to have support, but not like that. We're not priced like that. We're not part of a degree program. We weren't developed like that. That being said, you got all kind of orientation videos like the one you're on now, best practices, notes, videos. For the first three to four months, I'm, I'm actually sending a message to you through the platform, through the Canvas platform every week with, okay, here's how I would like you to stay on track based on when you came into the program. Here's some ideas, do this, don't do that. Those kind of things. We send you monthly emails as well. So there's a lot of ways we can help you stay on track. If you ever have questions about, well, I forgot my URL or my password. Well, eight to five Eastern, Monday through Friday, Yale and Dobbs education staffs are available all the time to help you with those kind of things. If you ever have a technology issue, well, I, I was in my office yesterday, the videos worked fine. I'm at home now on my laptop and these videos look funky. Well, it's probably your operating system. You could have some firewalls up, that kind of thing. Canvas at Yale Tech support is available 24 seven by phone, email, or, or that live chat function that you see all the time now. Um, so that's your help there. We've got a very lively discussion board in this particular program and study groups do form out of that. I also leave the best questions between candidates and faculty. There are a couple of us that answer questions in the discussion board these days or between yourselves, I leave those up kind of as an FAQ, especially if I think it's an area that other people are gonna struggle with, particularly on the exam. So that's a great resource that you're gonna leverage if you fall into the camp of, I might need some help. And then lastly, you've got what we call lifelines. You get 12 of them, you get a dozen of them. If you ever are like, okay, this is really important. Jim says it right here in the video, I'm gonna get tested and I just clearly don't get it you're going to want to reach in your back pocket and pull out that lifeline and reach out to Ross Richardson, as you'll see in the program right now. He's our faculty member that's working with you guys on those kind of questions. So I want you to use them. That's what they're there for, but you're going to use them with purpose. You're going to use them carefully. You don't want to get to the end of your test prep and go like, I got three more things to ask and I'm out. So the, the good news is the vast majority of our candidates over the years don't ask anywhere near their 12 questions by the time they're done. Uh, but I want you to know it's there. But I also want you to know that if you think, yeah, but Jim, you got 11 sections. I may need 12 questions in all 11 sections. That's a good indication that this may not be the program for you. 
What we don't have a cap on is questions that are administrative or technology, and we don't have a cap on questions regarding your study plan. So if you're ever like, yeah, but Jim, I'm halfway into this, and I'm not sure if I'm on the right path, reach out. We'll have a Zoom or a phone call with either Ross or me. Just make sure you're on the right path. I want you to feel great about your study plan so all your attention is focused on the content. So that's kind of how we handle all of that, and that's where your help is. I'll let you look through the program faculty on online because all the rest of them are there as well. We've got some great ones. Kitsis, you might want to go to kitsis.com if you don't know Michael and get uh, sign up for his free version of the Nerd's Eye View. It's a great technical resource for you if you're doing comprehensive planning at this level. Um, and uh, Michael's a great um, faculty member. Toby and I have been doing work together in this program and others, including at Chicago, now Yale, and even outside of that all kinds of different um, programs together. He's fabulous. I think you're going to love him and, and many others. Just go to our website and you can learn more about them. Same thing for scores and feedback. We do take this seriously. I think my main point is we track a lot of things and we try to improve all the time, but we're not perfect and we never will be perfect for a few reasons. One, we'll never have a copy of the test with accredited certifications. That's obviously a no-no that undermines the exam and the certification itself. The other is we all have lear different learning styles and preferences. So we could create a perfect program for Kelly, but it wouldn't be the perfect program for me because we don't learn exactly the same. <laughs> so the point is we're always trying to make this better. We take your feedback very seriously, <clears throat> but there's a lot more scores and quotes on our website. <clears throat> Excuse me, in, in case you're interested there. Let me take a quick drink here. All right, a couple of minutes to go. And this is just about hopefully helping you figure out if this is the right certification and program. We're high on flexibility here, customizing your learning plan, right? Videos, summary slides. A lot of people make flashcards out of those, for example, all the practice questions, um, videos from me on the test prep, those kinds of deals. Comprehensive coverage. No doubt we have more coverage. Now, some of you may not like that, but we have more coverage, I feel certain, than anybody else. Uh, you do need to have the motivation and self-discipline, and I've kind of been working around that this whole time. Um, we can do everything we can to help you, but we can't just jump through the, through the screen, this camera, and do it for you. You do have to have a fair amount of motivation and discipline. But look, if you're up for a challenge and you've got that motivation and di discipline and you want to join us at Yale, we would love for you to come be a part of the Yale family. You can register through our page, which is really just going to send you to IWI's web, website. So I would just go to IWI's website, go to CPWA and apply for candidacy tab, which you'll see pretty quickly um, when you're ready to apply. Remember to do the scholarship application first, and then you'll come back for the uh, candidacy application after that. And then here's Kelly and my contact information, but I think we've got a couple minutes for last Q&A. Uh, we do have a question. Is there a blueprint available for the 500 plus topics? <clears throat> yeah, the, the only blueprint that you have that is condensed is that PDF uh, copy that I'm talking about. So just shoot me an email, either one of those that you see in front of you, Yale or Dobbs Education. I'll be happy to send you an email back with that PDF form of that uh, core topics list. Okay, we are just about at time. Oh, look, we got one more. Uh, yes, yes, there is going to be, we will share the slides and the recording. Yes. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So uh, thank you so much, Jim, and thanks to everyone for joining us and for all your great questions today. Uh, as Jim mentioned, for more information, you can visit our website or reach out to us directly with any additional questions. And we will share the uh, recording and the slides in the coming days. And thanks again for sharing your time with us. So this concludes our webinar.